Cloud, Echo, everybody coming in with Nidalee. So just Link was playing Nidalee, flashed it to us for a second, but he went with the Ari pick. So, like we said before, he played that very well on Marn. The kind of every, the replay that everybody remembers <laughs> is that full Marn kill at the bottom lane with an Ari. So, we'll see that coming in, Echo, on his comfort champion. But Yeah, I think one of the reasons that the AP Nidalee mid has kind of fallen off is because she lacks a lot of playmaking ability early game. Right. She has no hard CC that she's bringing to that lane. There's not a lot of kill potential there. It's really an end game poking uh, champion that, mm -hmm. that they use to, you know, land spears onto high priority targets is, is always great. And you can uh, zone people off of high priority objectives. But with the focus so much now on those early plays and the crowd control, she, she just does not bring that to the mid. mid game. Renekton getting a little bit of love here as well. It's been a while since we've seen Dyrus on that. <laughs> we'll have to see how he goes into it. Usually not not too much from an early game. Obviously, Renekton that meat shield. So we'll have to see TSM kind of draw this one out into the game in that mid to late. Yeah, so after this very new composition that they used earlier in the day that they've been using in um, their rank 5 games. Back to North. They went all oh, way <laughs> far back to old school TSM. They got the Bash Brothers, Nasus and Renekton comboed with Reggie's Karthus to oh. add in onto any sort of a, the side lane ganks that happened. So this is a TSM going back to their roots after they after they got their new composition just stomped on. I feel like Velocity is going to want to match this lane. So they match the duo so they can pressure mid a little bit more, not have to worry about the 2v1, and just jump this Karthus over and over again. Yeah, so you talked about NK Inc.'s uh, variety <laughs> of jungle champions. Jungle uh, Kha'Zix here is fun for solo queue, but we have not seen this in the LCS at all because his early jungle is actually pretty hard to get through. And Kha'Zix is a very uh, snowball champion. You love to get items on him, so yep. he wants a lot of farm. And this is NK going for a carry jungler, which we don't see in almost any other competitive teams. All the competitives are going with these utility, defensive, tanky-oriented junglers, whereas Velocity here, they want NK to shine, and they want to feed him farm. So it'll be very interesting if we see him actually taking a lot of you know lane tax, as people like to call it in solo queue, getting that lane farm um, and getting the Kha'Zix fed up. It comps great with the team. If he doesn't get the kill, you got the perfect setup for a Twitch to just end squishies with his ultimate from the outside. So coming in very big composition here with the Kha'Zix Maple Street on Twitch as well. We'll have to see if Velocity Esports again can kind of throw something new into the mix. Now up against Team Solo Mid. They got a lot of their comfort picks as we said before. Myself for to the third and Kobe about to bring you the fifth match of the day as we are under the rift. And actually, it does take some of that extra pressure off of Maple Street because if he can even just get people low enough with Spray and Pray and get everybody worried about the health bars, NK Inc. will take advantage of that isolation damage on Kha'Zix mm -hmm. and finish off people. That's what he's built to do is jump around. So we'll have to see um, how he actually builds that Kha'Zix from the jungle and if he goes the same route that most of the competitive junglers are using now which is just building tanky on everything or if he builds this Kha'Zix into a carry jungler and he can build it damage. Mm -hmm. Looks like Dyrus' keyboard kind of just going crazy for a second. We're going to get that plugged back in and set up as you see QC helping him out instantly as that goes down. So we see a first of the buys that are coming out here. The six inventory, or eh, six for both. It's only five on one side, but the inventory is coming in. Six for the supports. They do have those <laughs> Explorer Wars. We'll just say it anyways. But no Doran start except for the AD carry. So nothing really strange off the bat. Cloth 5, though, coming in for Chris. Yeah, those uh, the Explorer Wars and Biscuits. That's cheating for the supports. Uh, <laughs> fill up their entire inventories. But the Cloth 5 on Chris makes me think he's expecting to get two versus one. So... Velocity probably looking for that lane swap and looking for Chris to go uh, with the two versus one. Uh, it, it actually doubles really well against Renekton too because Renekton, you know, it's it's all about that physical damage there right. uh, from Dyrus. So if he does end up going solo with his Shen versus uh, the Renekton, then he'll be in a pretty good situation to sustain through that lane, and he'll really just have to be worrying about the ganks because he's gone wardless. Right. We'll have to see as they get onto the Rift. We're almost set and ready. Dyrus's keyboard, like I said, it was just giving him a few problems there. We got a ready on the screen from Ebeniscus. The countdown behind us and some League of Legends action to continue. Here, game five now underway. Velocity Esports versus Team Solo Mid. It's been Team Solo Mid's win each time so far. Velocity looking to get some revenge. Yeah, and TSM are looking to get another win because they have so much confidence versus Velocity from their first two wins. 
and so much, uh, you know, they're kind of on a, on a backward spiral here, um, especially with the loss today. They definitely want to get something back here, and that's kind of why they've reverted to their older team composition style, and they just want to take it back to that comfort zone. Wards being placed out here for NK Inc. to stay safe in the bush. They are also guarding very much so for this blue side. They want to make sure that he can get that. Is it tough? If Kaze, obviously it's tough as a mana reliant jungler misses his blue, but how does that go for Kazakh? That is a, a good point actually, because Kazakh's definitely uh, very mana reliant. He wants to, uh, of course, you want to get both your buffs right. starting out, <laughs> especially this three point eight jungle. But he would definitely prefer to have his blue buff first, because even if he starts out with a red buff, it'll be a problem. Odd one does get hooked in, but there's no other members here for Velocity. It's a three versus three, so they don't actually have the advantage in that engage. It looked good, but he's used to being on. A leash backing up Maple Street, taking a few lay wastes, and he is going to get himself out. Reginald, quite aggressive here. His team really wasn't able to act on that. If he got jumped on, there would have been some flashes burned. But as we look down, it's only Reginald's exhaust, so it's not really going to mean too much aggression to either person in lane. Yeah, having that down, uh, not too big of a deal because he'll have the the flash to get mm -hmm. away from ganks. But I love the pink ward there from Velocity because <laughs> of the vulnerability of Kha'Zix early in the jungle, like I said, you know, he's he's a little bit squishier um, and he does have a, a little bit of a harder time in the jungle. So clearing that out and assuring him that he will get both of his buffs is huge. Jumping him to level three and securing uh, the solo buffs here for NK. Oh. <laughs> Wild Turtle missing a few shots onto the golems in the bottom lane. He had to walk back and get a few. We'll see if that level two can really mean anything against Shen in the bottom lane. Chris should be able to stay safe as they approach. Two and a half minutes in, it doesn't look like there's anything but buff control. Like you said, both junglers haven't even grabbed that yet, but we'll have to see if they both continue to the bottom lane. Yeah, NK ain't going to be very happy to grab up both of his. They did use the pink ward up, up top there for that one, so it means that the duo lane won't be able to clear out that tribish ward for an easy gank from NK, but a definitely worthwhile trade for them. And they're especially happy with this, the early game, the way this early game is played out, because Chris did get his two versus one that he was looking for. Just waiting to see what opening both either of these teams can find right now. And Kang does take those wolves, and we're going to see him obviously head towards that bottom lane. The 2v1 experience soak up to be done by both junglers now. And they're not even going to look for the, the kill here. It's just NK going to show up straight in lane, exactly the same as the odd one is doing, because Chris did get poked very low. And Kha'Zix, he really needs to get that level 6 and get his evolution before he can look for his uh, execution and his, and his solo kills. Because now that he's been changed, the upgrade on his Q uh, actually gives him 8% extra damage, 8% of the target's missing health in extra damage on his Q. NK Inc. doing quite a good job at picking up CS as Nasus would with Spirit Fire in that lane, so they're keeping themselves quite leveled and quite fed with money that they require. No push really coming from Velocity, though. They're freezing this off the tower as much as possible. Yeah, we always talk about how great of a wave clear that Spirit Fire is, but it's not that great of a last hitting tool. So he is, <laughs> you know, missing out on a couple of those uh, last ones. But Darius is doing a good job of picking them up here. So the, D the CS difference is kind of evened out by the, the 5 of Shen here versus the 13 of Darius landing the last hits. Let's see what they continue to do in lane 13, like you said, to 5 in there. We'll see what they can do is we still have help from NK Inc. in the bottom. Those buffs, unfortunately, only going for experience to the junglers and not really utilized for any of these ganks. This again leaves TSM and Echo, or yeah, TSM as Reginald rather, and Echo in mid lane to farm it up without any pressure for this whole time. And Reginald's exhaust just came back up. So he didn't lose anything mm -hmm. by having that summoner down very early. He's already got the timer reset on it. And as we know, Reggie does like to go aggressive. Now, if he ever does catch Echo out, then he'll have the exhaust tool at his disposal as well. And we have to consider approaching five minutes in the game now. Those two-minute wards are starting to disappear off the map. Mid is now no longer covered by any wards. Echo is still going aggressive there. Reginald may be helping him to set up for something, but no movement from the junglers just yet. 80 carries and supports still brute, just brute force on these turrets. The three-minute wards do last uh, will last through there, though. 
And so they, they won't have too much of a problem. It looks like uh, down bottom, though, it's going to be Chris fending for himself, while the odd one is still up in this top lane. So extra damage being put down here. You would usually expect the Caitlyn dual lane to, to get the early damage advantage mm -hmm. on a turret anyway. We'll see where they transfer to. It's going to be, again, NK Inc. heading down to the bottom lane. And just farm up. We'll see. Reginald finally going back, getting more rewards, getting more sustain for lane. We'll see what his first item is as he comes back versus Echo. Bitting up the Chalice. Just continuing. They know they're just going to fight in lane. He picks up mag magic resistance and the ability to keep going at it. Yeah. Everybody really stuck in that laning phase right now. <laughs> so it's, it's not a surprise to see people... Uh, you know, building for the lane phase right now. We haven't seen the increase in pace that we usually get for two versus one switches because both this game and last game, junglers basically just being a second support and heading straight to the lanes after they get their their two important jungle camps, which are the buffs. Well, we have to consider what chances Team Solo Mid's going to take here. The calls are coming from Reginald. The calls last game in the picks from Reginald. So he's got to be sure his team comes through with momentum this game and confidence to win because one after that is going to keep just pressuring them down and scratching away at them. Exactly. We saw in the interview that Chris's and Velocity's plan for this game was to pressure Reggie. But because both junglers had gone the defensive mm -hmm. route and they're staying in lanes, there's no extra pressure on Reggie. It's only coming from his heads-up battle with Echo who's a sub for the team and doesn't have that communication. There goes Wild Turtle Ooh. getting taunted. Some big aggression there. NK Inc. puts himself on the back side. Here comes the Requiem from middle. They got to remember when that window was open. First blood goes to Reggie. This is how TSM made so many plays back in the season two. Uh, start off a gank in the side lane as soon as you do have Requiem available. And there it is again, underestimating the damage. And it looks like they're rewarded with not only the kill, but the first turret. And he had actually just hit level seven, a minion after that kill. So the team had known that was up for quite a while. Velocity just chose to go aggro the and wrong moment. That's actually up to Echo to, to be notifying his team of and mm -hmm. looking to oh. stop. Because Ari is a, one of the one of a very good. Uh, he's a good champion for stopping the uh, the requiem chance because he can use his spirit rush yep. to get in position for that charm to uh, to stop it. One after the other, harass coming from the top lane as Velocity trying to grab a few more back into their favor. Echo taking a good lay waste there from Reginald hitting all the skittles that he needs. Eight minutes into this one, he still has enough mana to just kind of hang out in lane, sustain with his chalice, but he's got to be careful. No, NK Inc. Oh yeah, evolves. I thought he was going back. He may actually come for Reggie in just a few here. And he has evolved his leap first. He hasn't even gone for the Q, so he's not looking for the early mm -hmm. uh, assassination damage and the extra 8% uh, missing health for the executes. He's looking for resets just with his basic kit here. So uh, he's going to be able to continually jump around the team fights if they do get the kills. A rotation coming in from Turtle and a special here towards the mid lane. It seems like they are trying to catch Velocity off guard here and take out this mid turret, deny vision and map pressure. Yeah, so usually we see the AD and support switching up to the top lanes there, but now they've made their rotation over to the mid and that paired with Nat, uh, Nasus mm -hmm. is a huge, huge amount of damage to be put on the middle turret. I would have said it was Karthus. Karthus as well. <laughs> NK Inc. The turret goes down. Is Echo there close enough? It's going to be Chris coming in as well with Stand United. They try to pull this one out of the trickery box, but it looks like they may get put back in. Odd one goes down into that one as they throw it down. Wild Turtle's going to get hit up here. Trying to kite with the red buff. Another shot. NK Inc. The burn might be there, but he throws down a potion. Nice orbit of deception from Echo. Got the double buff on him. He will have a good amount of damage to come out of this fight still. Foxfire onto both sides. Neither of these two champions can kill Echo by themselves, which which is why they are on the run. Echo to chase Orb of Deception left over the wall and it just misses. Expecial, a straight line is the quickest way away from your opponent. Good job there by Expecial escaping and not adding another death there to TSM's count because even though they got the turret, it was answered by Maple Street left up top alone. He will start to back deciding not to push that lane. All of TSM trying to regroup out of the base right now. And it looks like Velocity does have some work to do. So TSM has this time that they bought themselves. The lanes are pushed. They have to reset here. The ping finally going down. I was just going to say, somebody wants that dragon soon. Well, since there's no bottom turret here for Velocity, uh, they actually need to take advantage of this window that they have where Reggie has shown himself in the top lane split pushing if they want to make that move. Right. 
Red buff going over to Turtle. Looks like they will start to organize towards that mid lane. It's going to be Reggie in the top. Requiem is up, so he can somewhat participate in the fight. It's also a lost fight. He's got damage on the top turret prepped for a later time, so looks like they're going to go for it. He would be able to add his damage in at least, and it looks like that's what TSM is banking on. It's actually TSM looking for this fight because Echo's still in base. So all the are basically out of position right here, and they're trying to burst down this dragon. He's quite low. Maple Street on the outside. Throws in the flash. They're going to have some expunge damage on this. It goes to NK Inc. He's able to get it. The Smite Wars go to him once again. And it looks like they may try to activate someone to fight a beautiful Lantern out on the Thresh Express. Dyrus taking quite a bit of damage with the ultimate is on. The flash forced from Chris as the taunt was just on the tail side. Maple Street should stay alive on the ace in the hole. Everybody backs out of this one. Great steal by NK Inc. Yeah, and trading one for one is amazing. This is exactly what Velocity needed. Look at the gold lead. They're back to all almost even right here. You saw NK Inc. instantly go down though, and that's because he's going with that carry build. He's not building a uh, tanky jungler here. He is looking to use that Kha'Zix assassination potential. We can see Velocity also putting a lot of respect towards those wards. Pink wards coming in for NK Inc. Sight, the Ruby Sightstone already in for Evaniscus and more wards just in the inventory to make sure it's not a snowball that they have, but to keep this game going as is and possibly grab an advantage soon. They definitely do want to uh, keep up that vision. Reggie, though, he did a great job shoving that top lane while he was left alone. Even though TSM uh, <laughs> did lose out on the dragon, they he's beaten on that turret. They got a lot of damage on the turret. <laughs> it's still standing, though. It's still prepped, and the good thing is it's not that bottom turret that you have to worry about Baron at some point in nine minutes being a threat. So once they kind of tangle for Baron, if they haven't gotten the turret, it's more gold for them. So it works out. Meanwhile, his counterpart, uh, Echo in that Ari, is putting the focus on his auto attacks and has gone Sheen, uh, which he's looking to build into that Lich Bane. It's very interesting, the Ari builds, the flexible Ooh. Ari builds that have come out because of the, wow, her focus on the, on the auto attack. So it is going to be a two versus two, but we'll see that auto attack damage in, in action here. They had a ping going down onto NK Inc. I think they saw him in the tri bush or just saying Ari is around this position. So they know it's at least, like you said, that 2v2 in the top, but they're spreading it thin everywhere here. They're trying to just do 2v2 power or friends, friends with benefits. <laughs> <laughs> Take turrets, hold hands, do everything we can. They didn't get much benefit out of that <laughs> action up top, though, as both sets of friends end up recalling here. And you can see why. Because the goalie is so even right here, you can always tell how the game is going with the where the wards are placed. Both teams basically drawing the line in that river right here and not feeling uh, like they have the pressure needed to venture far into the jungle of their opponents. So this is actually pretty good for Velocity, who wants NK Inc. Uh, to have the time to ramp up on his Kha'Zix and turn his tier into the Muramana, where he actually starts getting some damage benefits from it. So in the game of focusing Reginald, obviously they haven't really had the chance to due to the way the lanes were matched up. Does that come at another point? Because now that Requiem's up, he's got Death Defile as his passive. It's almost unfocusable. Yeah, they've kind of missed their window, where they talked about wanting to put a lot of early pressure onto Reginald and force TSM into some bad calls. Now it's already at the mid-game point, and Reginald does get focused <laughs> here as he's taunted under the turrets for a little extra damage. Oh, a few good shots there. Maple Street making his way in. All in Viz status, but he's not going to be able to do much. But that pulls four now to the top lane. That ward has seen them. TSM has already put a few too many number in the top lane. So it looks like they go ahead. They're going to regroup on their buffs, which neither team has had real interest over controlling either buff of the teams, which we saw was a high priority last game. So just game to game, you can see what kind of affects a team's decision. Yeah, well, if they've got the interest, they haven't had the wards to back it up. You right. definitely, <laughs> definitely very dangerous to go in there, especially if your velocity on a jungle Kha'Zix. Invading is very, very sketchy because he can be bursted down uh, very quickly if he does get caught in any type of CC. So really it's been uh, both teams just trying to answer with the objectives and farm this up. And it looks like uh, Velocity finally want to make use of that Shen, having him split push up in the top lane and, and make use of the available Stan United for any sort of action that does break out on the other side of the map. Just to show not how far they are ahead, but how far they could be 
quite soon. Aveniscus with the Oracle already coming out around 14 minutes. Like we said, that Ruby Sightstone was finished quite, like, at least five minutes ago. And it's a gold generation item coming in for a special. So they're feeling a little bit of the hurt. That loss of Dragon that NK Inc. still is kind of flowing into that ward. It's going to start being the vision for Velocity. That is a little bit painful. But look at the action going down here. Bottom, it'll be a lot more painful. <laughs> Dyrus is looking to hunt this bug. And NK Inc. just simply hops away, making use of his evolved leap, which not only does it get to reset, but, you know, it's a longer jump as well. And he actually is able to escape the wrath of Dyrus. Didn't float in quiet enough. He just, he was seen. Wasn't one with the river. So 16 minutes in, 3-3. Three to three, Gold, 22,000 to 21 and a half. Well, it's actually just a K a piece. Uh, K away, I should say. And it's going to be three turrets to one. So Team Solo Mid trying to grab up that global map pressure, be able to figure out which one they want to take next. And right now, with that first line down, that opens up the buffs and gives them the dragon, right? Because they're closer to it, and it's got to be that run coming in. Yeah, exactly. Both teams are thinking the same thing here, though. They've they've sent the, uh, the Gobles up top here, and Chris brought his own ward. Reggie doing the same thing here, so both of the split pushers still being wary and still having to ward for themselves and not venture too far past mm -hmm. that river. You can see as soon as Reggie hit the halfway point, he roams back down to join the rest of his team in mid. And as soon as Expecial himself, you can see he just got 400 gold in his favor. He goes up back and buys himself an Oracle as well. So coming out, both of these supports know what vision can cost them this at this time in the game. I wouldn't say this far into the game. It's mid-game, but this is when everybody's ramping up with the core items. This is when that next fight of deleting someone's bounty or building that bounty happens. And the next fight should be at this Dragon Velocity. Have Stan Unite available, so they would definitely love to contest this one if they had vision and knew that TSM just burned it down. Oh no, Echo's gonna try to run in. Trying to save himself. Loses one tail, the second one stays on. It looks like he's going to be able to get out. So that's TSM's oh, wow. first Turtle. dragon coming in. Oh, misses the wall. That gigantic log. And it looks like he's going to continue to go in. Flashes over for the shun ulti. Spirit Fire somewhat zones the fight, but nobody gets the real pressure on them. Wild Turtle still has it. He gets the wild growth and he's alive. Requiem only doing a bit of damage. The Ignite able to take down NK Inc. from the hands of Dyrus. Odd one on the outside, but he's very low. Just trying to get that alt damage inside. Dyrus going around with Cole the Meek, but he goes down in the end. Maple Street hits him with the expunge. And he's not done chasing here. You get speed oh bonus from that he, invisibility, too. He wants that Oracle right there in front of him. He throws down the flash. The slow is there. Can't see through the bush. There's no vision. X Special forcing the flash, and he actually clicks. Hits the ward as it comes around and stops him. Again, Dragon going to TSM here, but Velocity picking up an extra kill. The only reason that they didn't get another one is because NK Inc. not strong enough. Just him and Chris uh, diving onto Wild Turtle not able to finish him off through that barrier. Even though Enkank did already hit 11, and he evolved his Taste Their Fear, so he did get the extra execute damage, but wasn't quite enough with that extra shield. TSM ramping up now. Dyrus with that Sunfire Cape coming in. That split push now going to be more effective when he chooses to do so. Right now he's in mid lane. And may they just be guarding that. Right now, they've only lost that top turret. And that's going to be the pressure, as we said, for Baron later if anybody needs to run away. So they're guarding that bottom. They're guarding that mid, knowing that Dragon's going to be better for them. They need it over and over. And they've, again, sent both of their uh, Globals top. Yep. Even though they were just used in that last team fight, uh, they're going to stay up in these lanes and continue to push it halfway and then leave your lane. Reg is going to not venture any deeper into this Velocity jungle because he not only uh, does not have his Requiem, but he's very squishy too. So he could easily get bursted down there by that Kha'Zix. It's just safely, it's so much safer to easily triple split push like they are when that mid turret's down. All of Velocity is saying, quick, get to mid. We want to push down mid. Ours is gone. But TSM's always there to answer. Yeah, it's a, it's a little bit uh, of a hesitation here, too, mm -hmm. from Velocity. They're not collapsing immediately on the mid turret, and TSM do get to force uh, the reaction here. Because there's no standing United from Shen, he has to come down whenever they're faced with the possibility of that team fight. Right, it's when TSM realizes that, hey, we have them in the 4v, and now the 3v as, again, stretched thin. Velocity tries to clear the lanes at least past River. That's kind of been a tough thing for them, but TSM is doing a great job. It's not Velocity's fault. And for Velocity, they, they're taking every opportunity to grab a few extra minions right, right. on that NK Inc. because they desperately want him to become a threat. 
And coming out of the jungle, he's going to have a little bit lower money than usual, but we've seen them feed a lot of this lane farm to him as well. Oh, yeah. You can see the difference here between him and the odd one on Nasus. Yeah, 126 to 78 in that farm, Kobe. You are just talking about almost the items that they need. Chris, looks like he could be baiting this one out as you see his team start to roam towards that top lane. The Aegis almost coming out for odd one, but that's already built onto Chris. And once that bulwark is up, they only have the AP coming in really of Reginald and then odd one once he can walk himself into the fight. And there's a lot of kiting that these guys can do. Yeah, it's interesting uh, differential in items there that's been brought about by basically the reversal of roles where top laner for Velocity is building the team oriented mm -hmm. uh, defensive items because they want their damage potential to come from their jungle, which is NK. Meanwhile, odd one, uh, just finishing up his Aegis of the Legion. So they are able to answer. Uh, both teams are going to be wrapped in that protective aura. Recurve Bow coming into the hands of Maple Street as he locks down a Bloodthirster first. We got an Infinity Edge on the other side, and there you go, coming in with that Divine build. It picks it up just after we talked about that Recurve. It's interesting how, you know, the game has sort of uh, stalled out a little bit because each team are looking for that free farm. Reginald always looking to carry on that Karthus, and he is taking that solo lane free farm there for TSM. While Velocity, on the other hand, need NK Inc. to be the assassination uh, resetting champion that Kha'Zix is so that he can take out those threats early game. That bulwark is finally finished, but we have to consider Velocity has not seen what kind of power Reginald can bring to the fight in at least five, six minutes. He's got that Archangel stacking up. The Rod is now stacked up. That's going to soon be a Seraphs. He is quite close to it as we look at it. Actually, he's not quite close to it. I'm a liar. He's 330 of 750. But still, that power he's bringing in hasn't been seen by Velocity. So we'll have to see how they react instantly to this next fight of Area of Effect. You're getting split up. And I do like that, you know, adaptation by Reggie because he realized that this is a farming game here. <laughs> we're, we're stalling out a little bit and just looking yes. for those high-impact team fights. He's built accordingly with both of his items as the ramping up items that take time to power up. And he is just fine with stalling this one out because he's only going to get stronger as the time goes on and he gets more free lane farm up against this Shen. And Kobe, you're even more right about Kha'Zix wanting to be that aggressor. The Red Pot, 22 minutes in, spending 350 gold on the chance of a next fight going well for these guys. Well, they're basically at the point where Velocity are looking for the crucial team fight that right. will turn the game for them because not only do they have the uh, the two items completed for Kha'Zix here with the last Whisper Merman, but the Twitch has finished his Sword of the Divine. So he is looking for those three guaranteed crits on as many members of TSM as possible and then that opening up the opportunity for NK Inc. to go in and execute off and get his resets. And that NK Inc. Merman is going to be finished a lot sooner oh. than the Seraph's Embrace. It's only 150 off right now, and after that, still near 150 off, but it's close. This CSM grabbing the dragon as Velocity on the backside. Velocity just too late once again because of the lack of vision they've been able to keep up around the dragon. Another global objective just given away while Velocity is actually at a good team fighting threshold right now. They would love to engage and make use of those, those two items that they just finished. Hook trying to go in. They The minion clears so well Ooh. here. TSM Dyer is going in. They find Maple Street. Chris actually misses his taunt. No refund there. That's going to hurt Shen's engagement for this fight. You can see Chris on the outside. Only forced to stand United in, but he's going to have to walk with his team here. Taunt is still down. You can see that the crowd control isn't there, and Velocity is just being taken out. Expecial on the backside trying to help out with that one, but it's Wild Turtle able to get the last shot in. Going after Chris. The Peacemaker to come out. No! Hits him. The Requiem to come down. Not going to be enough. Is the follow up there? It oh. misses the flash, but he hits. It's the Peacemaker, one and the other, bittersweet. Very nice shot there from Wild Turtle, but that is what happens when this Velocity team starts their team fight out on the defensive. They had Maple Street running away in his invisibility as that one started out, so he didn't get off his initial three crits that they want to start that fight, which meant that NK Inc. was jumping in on almost a full health yeah. Reggie, and he didn't get any kill, there was no reset. He's just a sitting duck there. Kha'Zix went down even with that Shen ulti on top. Maple Street doing what he can, saying, get away from my turret. No respect given by TSM as they just take it down. 
and head out with the gold. 38,000 to 33,000. We finally get a little bit of a discrepancy in the gold there. Team Solo Mid has a great fight. Pushes down mid to an open inhibitor. And what TSM needs to do after that play is leave a ward by Baron so that the desperate Baron from Velocity is not an option. They have this oh one dear. that sort of sees a few people of Velocity heading towards Baron, so they've got an idea right now, and they need to go over and contest this. Kobe, you may want to fax them what you just said. They are going to check it, but they don't have the ward there. But it looks like Velocity even knows this one. They are not going to be caught out, and they say this was risky, and we have to be very careful. They did not want to actually have a fight at that Baron. They were banking on TSM <laughs> having at least two or three members recalled at this point. But they did a good job uh, leaving that one stray ward there that saw out the Velocity attempt at the Desperate Baron. And now that TSM have defended that early Baron attempt, they have an exposed inhibitor that they can go back to and force another fight when Reginald's Requiem's back up. And you can see TSM's calls, what they consider. Reginald saying, we have a few. Let's make sure this is cleared first. You go back, I'll soak up the wave, and then we'll all go back. Everybody on TSM was just backing, and they're considering, we don't even want to lose that mid turret right now. Exactly. We just had TSM win a giant team fight and get a really strong objective, but we don't see them going aggressive right now because they're timing right. their aggression with the long cooldown of that Requiem. So they want the next team fight uh, at that exposed inhibitor, but they want to be at their full team fighting potential, which relies so much on that extra Karthus damage. It looks like it's going to be at great capacity as well. We're going to see a special with all the summoners up to maybe the ignite being up of Evaniscus there. So we'll see the fight in their favor for defensive and continuous fighting in the favor of Team Solo Mid. Right now, NK Inc. still with that red pot in his inventory, building up to the Sunfire Cape after the bulwark was Chris. So you can see how he prioritized that team defense over the split push they're trying to get out of these global lanes. If you're at Velocity right now, too, you are looking to snag someone out of position mm -hmm. because your Sand United is available, and if, if they do get you need uh, two damage dealers on the same target, then a reset for NK Inc. would mean a completely different team fight from the last one. If he can actually hop back out after getting the kill, then Velocity have the time to reset and get, oh, there we go, the Charm to Dyrus. Dyrus getting out of that one. They pull in Reginald, is that what they want? Kha'Zix to assassinate right on the outside. He jumps onto him, but the jump is wasted because he was already dead, so NK Inc. forced out to use his ultimate. Requiem come down and dropping Echo, that's two down for Velocity. Reginald no longer to help in the fight, but it looks like TSM's able to manhandle the base on this one. NK Inc. trying to get back in for some more damage. The unfortunate jump in the beginning really hurt them. Yeah, they were able to assassinate one target. Great job, you know, using that sword of the divine there, but it was Reginald who still gets off damage. There was that Requiem we just talked about, and now they're on the Nexus turrets. This is going to be Team Solomid, the first Nexus turret, and the second one in their favor as well. Nobody there to rebuttal this one. They take down the Nexus and go undefeated still against Velocity. So congratulations to TSM going back to their roots, using those Globals and the Bass Brothers to take home a win. Really strong play. It's hard to focus out Reginald. He's got the champion pool. There's things he likes to play. They still had rise.